In the early 1980s, millions of people in the United States gladly purchased something for twice the advertised price. What was the problem and the common workaround? And I'll say that again. In the early 1980s, millions of people in the United States gladly purchased something for twice the advertised price. What was the problem and the common workaround? Look, there's lots of things that people pay surcharge for, but what's the problem? And why are people happy to do it? Now, I wonder if the price has something to do with it. We're like literally costing twice twice the price. Like maybe the price number makes it more relevant. Yeah. Like why is it? I don't know. So for example, uh, in, in the, um, some cultures like eight is considered a, a you know lucky number. So maybe something that's 44 bucks, you'd be like 88 bucks. Sure. What a, what, a, what a lucky price this is. Yeah, it is curious the actual two times price. I was initially thinking like scarcity or, or you know, that as being one reason why people pay more for something if they're worried it will run out. I wonder if it's like a two for one sort of deal that's, uh, that's helping with the two times price here. There was some scarcity involved here. A little bit wide, a little bit more geopolitical, but uh, yes, <laughs> scarcity is definitely involved. Early 1980s, uh, scarcity, something that people would pay double for, it just immediately made me think of the Cabbage Patch dolls that just like took over like everybody's life and people were fighting in aisles and like punching people to get them for their kids for Christmas. I thought you were going to say some kind of blockbuster movie that was uh, <laughs> no. scares everyone when it's rented at once. <laughs> that wouldn't be twice the advertised price though. They just price gouge on that. Like the price would have gone up. It might be twice the recommended retail price, something like that. But in this case, it was twice the advertised price. If it was $10 on the sign, they were paying 20. It feels so specific, doesn't it? About the about twice the advertised <laughs> precise. Yeah, it's really it's it's quite specific. Okay. Okay. So an advertised price is what they're putting on their bus ads, they're putting in the newspaper, they're saying it's this price, and people are walking in happily paying double it. If they're not um, getting anything extra in return, why would you pay more? Like in a sense, who would know that you're paying more? Is it for your own conscience, like that you want to pay more for something? Or does somebody know you're paying more? So maybe you're getting a better product or or something like that. It would seem odd if you're just paying more and nobody knows about it except you. It could be a pay it forward type thing where it's you buy one and then you get someone else, you know, like maybe someone there's a bit of Bit of positive karma going into it where Yeah, I wonder if it's karma, like good luck vibes kind of thing. Just trying to think what I've bought. <laughs> double price and go, oh, this is great. This is this is this is the life. I'm sure most of you, certainly most Americans, most adult Americans will have bought this at some point in their lives. When I think of Americans and I think of you know just automatically having something to buy, it only comes up to three things, which is toilet paper, paper towels, and sponges. And it's not a service, it's an actual <laughs> item. <laughs> what? what? Sorry, that's some very specific things to think of Americans there. And you're American. Those must be the things that sold out during the COVID rushes of shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Even beforehand, it's always like, I gotta make sure, gotta make sure, oh, I'll add milk to the, I'll add milk for some reason to the uh, to the list. Those are always the big things when they say how to go out and buy stuff. As a, as a non-American, when I heard the phrase, all Americans have bought this, my brain just went to Starbucks. Went to, went, to, went to coffee. Don't know why. No, no, nothing to back it up. All right, so we've all bought it. And double the advertised price. We're not price gouging. No, no one's being scammed here. Is it a service or is it a commodity? It's a commodity. Was it anything to do with um, money like coins and notes and they're like trying to change a note into a certain coin by paying a certain amount? That's something I can think of having done, like, you know, wanting to spend $2 so you get $3 back or something. It's not quite that, but certainly we're, we're talking about a fairly significant figure that had just been uh, reached and topped. It's not, it's not like gold standard, silver standard. We're not buying bars of gold and silver. No, not here. It's way more common than that. Most people in America okay. will have bought this. This is this is Reagan, yeah? This is... This is... Yeah. Uh, what, was, what, was, what was Reagan up to then? It's one of the most expensive, like, regular purchases that Americans would make. Like a regular in terms of, of schedule, not in terms of like ordinary, in terms of like maybe once a week, you'll have to buy this. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm thinking this, we're talking oil, we're talking oil crisis, we're talking petrol, yes. we're talking, yes, we are. we're talking, we're in the, the petrol crunch. That was the oil crisis in uh, 1980, 1981. So we're, we've got oil crisis, the, the things are spiking, we're happy to pay double. 
And the reason we're happy to pay double... Happy to pay double the advertised price. Is because it was limited, maybe? Like maybe if you paid twice at the pump, you could get more fuel through some workaround in the way that your car measures or, or the fuel pump measures how much is going out? That's very, very close. So remember, they're not paying double. They're paying double the advertised price. There's shortages of rationings, and by paying double the the price, you get more or ahead or more fuel out. Maybe the, yeah, they're measuring. <laughs> they're maybe like they're na- naively measuring just the amount of money spent on fuel and using that to to do their restriction. Oh, what about we're, we're in an oil crisis? The the price is going up. You know, at a faster rate than the ads come out. So if the ads came out on a day and saying it's going to be, you know, X, X dollars per gallon, as we use in America, but the actual price is higher than that, but the advertised price is lower than twice that, you're still getting a deal. Not quite. <laughs> this isn't, this isn't, this isn't, it's always sunny in Philadelphia scam where they're just putting it into big tubs and then selling it later on when the price changes so they made money off of it themselves. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's less a scam and more arbitrage. Um, <laughs> Toby, you said fuel pumps. Yeah, I don't know if this links with what Julian just said, but the logic was somewhere around the fuel pump and the way it measured how much fuel was going out. Maybe it only was measuring money, not fuel. I don't know, some link there. Some link is missing there. There's a problem and people found this workaround to to pay more. Yeah, you're nearly there. There's one last jump to make. Where might that price be advertised? On the fuel pump itself, like the little screen is is On the fuel pump itself. So why are people happy to pay twice the price that's advertised on the fuel pump? Because they were actually getting the real price that was advertised on the billboards instead of the pump. Exactly. Because gas had just done what? Skyrocketed in price. And what number has been breached? Oh, the dollar. Or Yeah, gas has just gone over one dollar. And what does that mean? Is it that the displays don't show the full dollar? So it's like, instead of being like one, zero, zero, it goes back to, to something? That's what would have happened. So the gas stations put a workaround in. They, maybe they just halved the price so that it would fit on the screen. Yes. <laughs> you know. well, more or less, they started charging by the half gallon instead of the gallon because the alternative was buying new pumps with more numbers on them. So they just put up signs on all the gas stations saying, uh, and I'm quoting here, pumps register half total purchase. And you had to look at the gas pump, double the price in your head, and that's what you would actually have to pay because that was much cheaper for the gas stations than actually having to get new stuff in the right. pumps. That's goodness. Oh, Australia, I remember when Australia passed a dollar for the first time. That was in my lifetime. And do you know what they did on that day? They got sheets of white paper and just drew a one <laughs> next to it and stuck it on the thing. So it said zero two or whatever. Yeah. They just a sheet of A4 paper. Whereas those crafty Americans with their half gallons, eh? Well, don't forget that this is 1980s. So a lot of those gas pumps were actually on like mechanical yeah. Clickers. It wasn't just a screen that could update, it was an actual mechanical gearbox. So they swapped out the gearbox in the gas pump, charged by the half gallon instead, and just told people to double the price until the price went back down. 